This audio program is presented by Nogan the Times Magazine and NogenTimes.com. Knowledge of self can only be found underground. So, share with us. I understand that you have something that um, that you would like to say before we yeah. get into the information. So, uh, feel free to um, go okay. ahead and, and present that for us. Thank you. I, I basically, I just want to, you know, in advance, just thank you again, um, and all the listeners that have tuned in and that will be tuning in. I thank you as well. There's a million things, other things you could be doing. Uh, but I also want to give thanks to Energy, which is my name for God, and our ancestors. Uh, for without them, we would not know who we are, know where we come from. And I also give thanks to all the African-centered scholars whose shoulders I stand on in our future, um, the youth who will continue to work in liberating the African diaspora from the effects of global white supremacy, enabling us to reform back to uh, self-reliance and independence. It's my hope this evening, all that an attendance will do, as historian Lister Belt Middleton suggests, uh, which is to sharpen your eyes and tune your ears so you'll know what you see and understand what you hear. And with that, I'd like to also start out with this poem. Uh, it's called Transition 13. And you'll hear me refer to a couple of historians that I consider Jegnas and not mentors, and that's we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, there are Jegnas of mine that I, I uh, proudly stand on their shoulders and have done a, uh, followed a lot of their work. And this one poem is in, uh, this historian's name is Anthony Browder, and one of his books is called Transition 13, and it's very short. I'm just going to read it to you real quick. Um, it goes like this. Um, we knew not. We studied. We learned all there was to know, and we taught others. Then we forgot what we had learned, and then we forgot that we had forgotten. Now we're taught by those who were once taught by us knowledge that we already had. So we study. We learn all there is to know, and we teach others. Will we forget again? So this is just a poem called Transition 13, and I think that that's a, I think it's resoundingly metaphoric for how we're living right now. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you um, mm -hmm. for blessing us with that. Um, so I guess we can just start at the beginning. Okay. Uh, um, as a former member of um, a fraternal order or secret society, however you like to refer to it, <laughs> fraternal order of men, um, how did you first become aware that something was not quite right? And, and how did that factor into your starting, your current move towards opening the eyes of our people by way of your website and other projects? Um, well, let me just be clear. One is that um, there's there's different kinds of organizations. There's secret societies, and then there's societies of secrets. Okay. And that I don't. It can get confusing because some people think everything you know is conspiracy, Illuminati, blah blah blah. You know, like, and to some degree that is true. But there's also organizations where you know secrets that are societies. Um, I mean, so societies that hold secrets rather. Uh, uh -huh. Those are usually organizations that may be a little harder to get into. Um, mm -hmm. I pledged, a, I pledged a <clears throat> one of the what they call the Black Greek lettered organizations, a fraternity in college, uh, Alpha Phi Alpha, uh, in '91. And um, it's not, I wouldn't consider it being like you know the elite of the secret societies or societies that behold secrets. It's more so that tier of, you know, uh, uh, it's a lineage of, uh, I guess, if you're worthy, then you get to graduate to the next level or the higher level, and that's where you're getting into the Masonic level or even the level of Boule or even more right. intricately, uh, your Illuminati. Right. But um, I did not really know of these things, uh, not until seven years in, of being in a fraternity, and I want to pay homage to a brother by the name of um, Stephen Coakley, uh, who for his for his work in exposing the boule, uh, mm -hmm. I went to see him uh, at a lecture, and I think it was ninety seven, ninety six, and that was when my whole <laughs> foundation was just destroyed because I was that guy that was in the fraternity that loved my fraternity um, for the 
so so I thought blatant African symbols, but in doing my research, I learned that they actually are not African as far as the lineage is concerned or where the respect is given. It's actually pointed towards Greece. But, you know, it's not something they blatantly teach us. But in doing that and learning about this history, I realized that I was at a crossroads. I could either negate or actually act like I didn't hear the information that Coakley had presented and I'm not one to just take something that someone says and just regurgitate it. I'll go and do my due diligence and do the research myself and confirm or come back with a rebuttal. Um, but it moved me so that it made me realize that I was compelled to do additional research for myself. And before I could say anything to anyone else, find out for sure how I felt about it. And in doing that research, I started to learn so many other things. And it started to really draw the correlation of what Transition 13 really is when we're talking about uh, historian George G.M. James wrote Stolen Legacy, who, who's written the uh, infamous quote, uh, Greek mythology is stolen African history. And when I started learning about that, that's when it started clicking, like, okay, not only can I just indulge and, and digest this information for myself, but I have to share this with others. So coincidentally, I was also writing and beginning my, well, no, by then I was about the fifth year of my magazine. It started in 93. So it, it just coincided that, okay, this is the vehicle you're going to use to... Mm -hmm. Uh, get this information out and create this con uh, this uh, conversation. Right. Well, I am glad that you you chose to share that uh, because I I believe that there are many who receive this information and they they hold it, um, you know, private and in in some cases, as you mentioned, choose not to um, not to share it, to just ignore it and to go on with. Uh, you know what they are currently doing because it's it's easier uh, mm -hmm. when you talk about receiving this type of of uh, information. It changes you. It changes your thinking and it changes your your actions. And so yeah. it it takes a certain amount of boldness to be able to do that and to sign on uh, to something like this and dedicate you know your life to it. So. I am I am most moved by you know you having the fortitude to shed um, those things that you pledged a bond to, mm -hmm. and to speak truth to what these societies are doing uh, in and to our community. Do you find others who have traveled this road uh, as receptive to your position on uh, these societies? Uh, <laughs> I get more. Um well, let me just say this first too: is that um, <clears throat> the the kind the the amount of information that uh, is out there, uh, you know, I would say that let, let me just give this analogy. In Kemet um, or ancient Egypt, which is you know the original name is Kemet, um, it was known that you know ignorance is a sin, but in the Western world, in today's world, ignorance is bliss, and. I'll say that, and I'll venture to say that majority of people that are in fraternities, sororities, uh, masonry, so on and so forth, are not entirely clear or have been exposed to the thorough or the other side, the type of information that we're revealing this evening. Um, and so when they do hear it, when they, when they are confronted with it, obviously, and even I went, was like that a little bit, it was emotional because I thought, wow, one, number one, I can't believe this is true. Number two, I never heard of this information throughout my pledge process and membership in the fraternity. I never heard of any affiliation with the Boule. I never heard of the word Boule. Never knew right. anything about the connection to masonry or even global white supremacy. This isn't something that they teach in fraternities and sororities. So I'll give them that pardon. However, mm -hmm. uh, in being an intellectual person and being as W.B. Du Bois coined these people as the talented tent. It's your responsibility to be kind of knowledgeable about what you're involved in. Um, and so when I, I come across people that I get more support from those that are in fraternities and sororities but don't want to come out outwardly and say that they, you know, are against it. I have, a, I have had a couple of people that have been, uh, you know, as adamant about, you know, breaking their affiliation, uh, have uh, given me information, a wealth of information, about what they know about their uh, fraternities, and particularly like uh, the breakdown of their shields and symbolisms and, and rituals. So there are those that are out there. Um, I'm hoping that they will there will be more. I'm I'm projecting there will be more. It's just a matter of removing the emotion 
behind it and understanding mm-hmm. that these organizations are older 